Hey there, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on H. pylori and autoimmune conditions. Again, I've gotten a lot of uh, requests for information on H. pylori, lots of people suffering from it. Now, H. pylori is, is a bacteria, it's a gram negative bacteria, and it's shaped in a, in a helical like fashion. And what it's known to do is, so if here's the intestinal wall, it's actually able to burrow its way into the intestinal wall like a corkscrew and burrow in there. It creates gastric inflammation, but it also decreases HCL. It decreases HCL via ammonia production. So ammonia is actually a very pH basic. It's got about a pH of 11. Now this is important because the healthy pH in the gut stomach particularly is about 1, 1 1.5 to about 2 to 2.5. This is really important to be able to break down protein. And the antibodies, the antibodies that are specifically in the immune system, right? Antibodies, they're primarily protein based. So if we're not able to absorb and break down protein, right? And H. pylori is affecting that via the HCL and ammonia mechanism by raising the pH. It can create nutritional deficiencies, which can affect our immune system. It can affect how our body creates energy because the Krebs cycle requires B vitamins and certain minerals like magnesium and, and zinc and such to have healthy Krebs cycle function to, to spit off ATP because ATP is our body's uh, cellular uh, energy for, it's our, basically the, cur the currency for energy, if you will, in the body. So H. pylori can create inflammation in the gut which then creates malabsorption via low stomach acid. There's also studies connecting H. pylori with Hashimoto's. There's one Italian study, I'll put it in the video below, where they actually took, they actually took patients that had Hashimoto's known with an antibody level, and they treated the H. pylori, and they actually looked after the treatment two, three months later, and they saw a significant reduction in thyroid antibodies. Now this is important because if we know 90% of thyroid patients today, they're actually autoimmune in nature. 90% on the high end, somewhere between 50 and 90%. So a significant percent of people who are autoimmune are autoimmune because of a thyroid. And there's a strong infection, right? There's a strong infection connection when it comes to various infections, especially H. pylori, and thyroid conditions. We actually even see it in Graves' disease as well, where we have a high amount of thyroid hormone versus Hashimoto's, which is more of a, a hypo. Graves' is hyper, Hashi's is hypo. So we see the mechanism, low stomach acid, low nutrient absorption, decreased protein. We see the fact that when we decrease H. pylori antibodies drop, there's also leaky gut. Because one of the biggest things that creates stress in the gut. Well, one of the first is gonna be gluten, right? Gluten's the main protein, gliadin or gluten, the main protein in grains that can create gut inflammation. But one of the main things that H. pylori has, it's a gram-negative bacteria, meaning it has two cell walls, but it also has a compound known as endotoxin. And endotoxin is a specific toxin, and it can affect the gut. It can create inflammation in the gut, and endotoxin can actually increase this compound known as zonulin. And what they find with zonulin, zonulin can open up the tight junctions in the gut. So in our healthy intestinal tract, our gut junctions are like this, right? So nice and tight. We have a tight junction, a tight junction, they come and they intertwine and it's nice and tight. When zonulin goes up, zonulin can go up because of gluten, because of endotoxin, it can go up because of lower vitamin D. But when it goes up, it can open up some of the, the tight junctions and you can see food particles slip through, even endotoxin slipping through. There's studies showing that antibodies for endotoxin in the bloodstream are linked with depression. So when we see these gut infections, whether it's H. pylori is the one this video is focusing on, we see a strong connection with autoimmune, autoimmune disease and we even see it with Hashi's and Graves. There's even studies looking at um, Alzheimer's and dementia with H. pylori and even Lyme's as well. 
But again, in this study, because of the, the effect on HCL, which is known, and because of the effect on endotoxin, because it's a gram-negative, because it's a gram-negative bacteria, endotoxin can increase zonulin, which can then open that gut up and increase more autoimmune disease. So this is the mechanism that we're seeing today with autoimmune conditions, with thyroid conditions, and with leaky gut. So we really want to make sure that if there's an H. pylori in a patient, in an individual, that we address it. Again, some infections are going to be the linchpin, right? If we address that infection, that person's going to feel substantially better. Other people, it may just been maybe a hidden inflammation that was just smoldering and years down the road, it may have been a problem. It really depends. Everyone's individual, but I've seen amazing things happen when we get rid of infections that are creating hidden inflammation. They may not have even known about it. So if you have an H. pylori infection, I have a couple other videos I've done on, and uh, check my YouTube library for that. And if you're curious about how I address H. pylori naturally using specific herbs and botanicals, feel free and subscribe to me below and, and reach out, get a, a, an assessment. So if you want to figure out the next steps for you to get rid of this infection, feel free and reach out and we'll work on that together. Well, this is Dr. Justin signing off and uh, have a great day.